everybody, and welcome to the 14th episode of CelebWorks Live, where we always try to catch them all. I'm Christopher Arsaga. I'm Neri Lemus. Thanks for joining us. Before we bring on our special guests, we want to remind you that you that if you have any general uh, questions for our special guests or for us, please post them in the official stream, and we will answer them if we feel like it. I'm excited to bring on this anime veteran and beloved CelebWorks client to the program. Terra Sands can be heard as over 50 characters on the original Pokemon series, including Bulbasaur, Richie, Jasmine, Oddish, and Fampy. Some of her other roles include Biscuit and Hunter Hunter, Makuba and Yu-Gi-Oh, Kari and Digimon Adventure, Cersei and Generator X, Summer and Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse, Carla and Gundam Thunderbolt, Kombu Infinity and One Punch Man, Death 13 and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Cynthia in Pokemon Generations, and Anna in The Shaman King. She has played roles in episodes of Celebrity Deathmatch, Sailor Moon, Naruto, The Seven Deadly Sins, TV Funhouse, Tiger and Bunny, and much more. Tara has voiced characters in a number of video games, including Sonya in the Fire Emblem Echoes and Fire Emblem Hero series. Tara has also narrated over 150 audiobooks, and for over 100 episodes, Tara was the on-camera host of the Cartoon Network show Fridays. On that show, Tara interviewed dozens of celebrities and had more on-camera food fights than she cares to remember. <laughs> she constantly has a bunch of top secret, top secret pod projects that she can't wait to share. She's a big supporter of our company and we love her dearly. Please welcome the wonderful and brilliant Tara Sands to the program. Yay! Hey guys! Oh my God! Hey! hey. Yay. How's it I just, going? Cousin Hi. It just joined us. How are you? Hi, Hi Tara. How are you doing? We I'm miss good. you how terribly. You? We're doing no, fine. That what a what an intro. But we're gonna have to work on something before we start. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna make. Okay, I want. How do you say both of you? How do you say the word P O K E M O N? Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. All right. Well. It was Pokemon? drilled into us. It's Pokemon. more of an A sound. Poke Pokemon. 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 A. Pokemon. You got Poke it. It's Pokemon? Yeah. Is that how Pokemon. you say it? Pokemon. Really? Okay. More of an A sound, yeah. Well, yeah, we it, it sort of changed early on. We were saying more of a, I think we said Pokemon early on. Yeah, but it's so interesting because isn't the song Pokemon, gotta catch them? Oh, no, no, whatever, but. Kind of, it's very subtle. And again, like, that sort of started, that, that was recorded before they had officially decided. Like, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that, it's yeah. so crazy. But um, yeah. How have you been handling the quarantine? I mean, everybody kind of wonders what everybody else is doing, so. I am, I wish I had something so, so, such a great uh, answer for that. I am <laughs> basically doing what everyone else is doing. I cured cancer. Um, no, I was just at home making orange juice. That's all. Yeah. I mean, I did hey, not, that, I'll that, tell you what I didn't do. I didn't learn how to make bread. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that's not what everyone else is doing. Um, I did not learn how to knit. Uh, I'm watching a lot of Netflix. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm reading the, 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 That's what all. Called, the chat. Um, hi, guys. Thanks for coming, you guys. Oh, Kendra, sweetness. Um, and Garen and Noah. Uh, and Mary. There was one other name you need to learn how to pronounce. Hit me. Mokuba. Mokuba. I know. I'm sorry. Mokuba. Mokuba. It's fine. Yeah. Forget My me. parents say it wrong. It's it's cool. And I'm there. The, the fact that they even can say it, I'm so impressed. Oh, no, no. They can't say it. Somebody, they they came, to, I'll tell you, this is a funny story, actually. They came to one convention I was at um, years and years ago. And for some reason, a mother with a little boy said to my parents, of all people, do you know where Mokuba is signing? And my parents responded, I, I don't think anyone by that name is here. <laughs> Yeah, like, it, oh, they, didn't even, they didn't even say, I don't know. They, they actually sent someone away. They're like, no, go away. Yeah, go. so that's I'm, my Father's Day story. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned your parents because, you know, you, you grew up, I think you were born in Hartford, Connecticut. You I'm, grew up, right? Yes. Grew up in New Jersey, right? <laughs> So can you tell yeah. us a little bit about what your beginnings? <laughs> well, I don't talk like this even from um, from New Jersey, but I can slip into it. Um, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, yeah, I grew up in New Jersey. It was great because I, I was such a, a theater lover as a kid, and I 
grew up right near the city and I got to, you know, see so many great plays and shows and the culture that I was like craving, I was so close to. So uh, very, very lucky that I, that I grew up there. Um, it's, it's funny, you see a lot of actors come out of New Jersey. That's I think true, like, right. Because we're so badly wanting to be in New York and like, we're like, <laughs> like I gotta get and, out of here. You know, we're workers and um, like, we're the dream seems attainable because this big city is right there. So nothing seems so out of reach. Um, but so, we're not in New York, so we're still fighting for it and hustling. So Broadway was like a huge motivator of oh. you growing up. Is that something you wanted to do? Oh yeah, I mean, I did. I I spent the first ten years of work in New York doing theater and voice. I was doing voiceovers the whole time, so I was really lucky. But uh, yeah, I did. I I did a lot of theater, a lot of terrible, terrible, off, 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 off Broadway theater, uh, and then some really good stuff. Like for every like five plays you do, one is really good. And did, is that what you're doing tonight? Only at Hobo Theater. Oh, it, some of it was terrible. I did this one musical. It was like over four hours long. Oh my God. And it was so, it was, it was, I mean, there were some good moments, but literally like we would, the cast would just like entertain each other. I remember there was like this one chorus number that like random people would just start making animal noises during just to try to make each other laugh. So like, you'd be like serious. It was like serious musical. And then all of a sudden someone'd be like, bah. <laughs> <laughs> See, but you buried the lead. That means you can sing, right? Oh, I was a singer. Yeah, I was a singer I, for a long time. I had no clue that you were a singer. At oh, all. I but I can't. I was a musical theater singer, but I cannot sing rock music to save my life. Like I'm a terrible pop or rock singer. I can sing mu musical theater music, but that's a uh, still impressive. It is impressive because I can't I've, sing either. <laughs> No, well, the, I'll tell I you the way I, people pay me not to sing. I so. like, well, when this is done, we'll go do karaoke. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. If, if I do rap, I'll kind of be okay with rap, but anything else I'm done. Seriously, I'm telling you, you, you would be blown away if you hear would me you rap. Go do rap. I'm, just, I'm telling you, you put on some NWA, I'm in. <laughs> oh, I'm I gotta hear. Just so you guys You're realize, rocking. like, so, so, I'm here with Chris and Neri, and um, you guys have seen them before, but we usually are traveling together when there are conventions. So this is like our little reunion, and I'm sorry you have to hear it. <laughs> no, I'm glad because <laughs> the people get a sort of an inside look of how we are at shows. And that's really why we miss this stuff is like, we yeah. miss talking to our friends. Yeah, you know? and I'm looking at the scroll and like, it's people like Kendra, there she is. Uh, and Kenny is in the scroll, like people we see at conventions. Kenny. Yeah, there's still- funny. I mean, yeah, I don't know. We'll get back to it. But, um, you know, it's just a matter of everybody being safe right now, keeping social distance, wearing masks. And even if it's a Bulbasaur mask, wear it. So, Oh, we need that. Yes. Yeah, we do. That would be fun. Yeah. So before we got on, you were talking about, like, having little things around you, little things to play okay. with. So that, that leads me to my first question, which is, when you were growing up, did you, like, collect anything? Did you have any hobbies or anything? Well, like I, I had a sticker collection and like I had a sticker album and- um, <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> like, but that's like a lot of little kids. But then one day I decided I, I had a big piece of like Oak Tag and I decided I was gonna take all the stickers off of the backings and just put them on this Oak Tag, which is like the dumbest thing you can do. <laughs> Cause then you can't use them for anything. I just remember my mom being like, no, no, that's no, no, <laughs> it was too late. Um, uh, uh, I'm just reading the scroll as I talk, but yeah, I, I mean, again, I was a musical theater nerd. That was my big, uh, how, I, I used to go to the library and just um, get tapes of, of Broadway shows and come home and copy them and, and learn all the music. And so what was your, what was your first transition? How, at what, like, what's the story behind Tara Sands in terms of getting from musical theater to voiceover? Well, it, it's sort of related. Um, I was in, in high school. Oh, my computer just went off. That was right. Uh, in high school, I was in a local at the local Y. <laughs> I was in a singing competition uh, for like scholarship money. And uh, a talent manager was there. And she called me into her office. And we went. My mom's like, oh, no. Uh, and the first audition she sent me on was for a voiceover. And I got the job. 
so it was really it was all kind of related so at 16 i was i started doing voiceovers and i i loved it like i it i'd never dawned on me that was a job i could have so um my i was for wart cream and <laughs> i said something like ew gross a wart uh and i couldn't believe i got the job like it was Ran. I mean, it's weird. It just what did, it doesn't. What, what did your parents say when that happened? Because they were like, I'm... they're paying you for that. <laughs> um, was, was that was that like your start of your voiceover career? I mean, was yeah, it... no, it, it completely was. I mean, I grew up wow. like, mimicking commercials. Like, I loved doing voices and all that. But and my dad's family was um, always in some kind of show businessy thing. You know, they had all done like commercials and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that wasn't for him. It wasn't so weird. My mom, it was. She was like, "Wait, wait, wait. Well, what are we doing? What we have? To, I have to drive into New York City." Um, but yeah, Sue, I'm really lucky. I mean, that was the. I couldn't have asked for a better introduction into voiceover. Um, I mean, a lot then, of people obviously that was like a couple lines, and then I would started doing things like audiobooks, which were more labor intensive, and um, it was a bunch of years until I started doing. Um, you know, it was mostly commercial work, and then trying to think what my first animation job was but my first anime job was pokemon i just i mean like i'm again, glad you i'm glad you mentioned it so how did you get cast in pokemon i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i really don't i it's so strange um I mean, I had, <laughs> you're looking for the local wendy's and you just like ran yeah. in some place and you're like yeah i'm in pokemon you're like yeah read this um really? i i've never been able to thank the right person. I, you know, it was during a time where we literally would just send out cassette demo tapes. And I, I was, you know, I look, I'm a, I'm a hustler. I'm a worker. Um, it might've been like one of the dozens of demo tapes I sent out, but some, but they got my demo somehow. And I don't know if someone gave it to them like to be nice or if I sent it to them randomly or so I got the audition and, um, I was a little later than some of the other folks. <laughs> Did you smack the camera? Was that what I, it was? You know what? I hit the cord. Oh, oh, that's hilarious. I thought you hit the camera. I was like, oh my God, that's I'm, funny. I'm super clumsy. Like, that's funny how we all reacted, though. We were all like, whoa. Yeah. Exactly. I was hoping we could just gloss right over that. Um, and no one would notice. <laughs> Not at all. I'm going to point it out every time. It's yeah, always better to point it out and just be like, hey, whatever. No big deal. I will definitely get hurt or break something <laughs> in the course of this, whatever we're doing here. What are we calling the stream? We had no, to have Tara Sand sign a non-disclosure agreement the moment <laughs> yeah. the moment no, she got on here. Yeah, I'm reading the scroll in case there's anything we want to. Oh, oh we, thank you guys, thanks Walter. Yeah, yeah Pokemon that. Journeys. We'll get to that. We'll get to Pokemon we'll, Journeys. We'll, we'll, do that. we'll do that at the end. We'll go we'll through. literally at the end click on whoever oh, we can. Okay. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. So don't worry. I'm very oh, ADD, and I can't. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's I know. okay. I so, I always read who's on and who's who's writing stuff. So I'm the same way. Don't worry. Okay, good. So you have. I'll make more in the scroll. We yeah. don't, so we don't know how you, we don't know how you got cast. But no, can you tell? <laughs> give us a little bit of an idea what like a Pokemon session was like? Because I assume you did it in person, yeah. right? So I'll tell you, my first day of work was actually pretty amazing. Um, so I went in, and it's I'm going to answer one of those scroll questions. Actually, um, ah. <laughs> I went to the studio. I think, God, I can't remember which studio we first worked at, and um, I was early because I'm always early. And they said, hey, come watch the end of the session before you. And there was this beautiful pregnant woman in the booth doing this little boy's voice uh, for this anime cartoon. I knew nothing about anime. Like, I, I don't, like, I'm sure they called me this job. I was like, all right, I don't know what this means. Um, and it was Veronica Taylor uh, doing Ash's voice. And again, like, it just hadn't even occurred to me that that was something I could do. Like, I just, like, all of a sudden, it was like all these aha moments happening at once. Um, and then I got in the booth and I was there recording one of the early episodes and there was a character named Melanie that I was recording. And because I was there, they said, Hey, since you're here, try to do this voice. And they showed me Bulbasaur. And I was like, what does he say? And they're like, Bulbasaur. And I was like, what else does he say? <laughs> they're like, that's it. And so that day I did, and they basically played me the Japanese and they said, sound like this but say Bulbasaur instead of Dane. Cause in, in the other language, uh, it, his, he's named Fushiga Dane. So he just says Dane, Dane, Dane. And I was like, you mean like say Bulbasaur? And they're like, yeah, sure. Just do that and match like when his mouth moves. And I was like, all right, this was really weird. I'll never hear from these people again. Um, 
And that day I played Oddish also. Wow. And so then, you know, then there was a, a pretty small group of us that kind of did all the voices at that time. So I was in the, I, I just was in the right, right place at the right time. I had, you know, studied acting and studied voice and hopefully all those things led me to be ready when they asked me to do those things. Cause there's that part of you that wants to be like, I can't do that. Like, I mean, I'm as insecure as anyone else. And luckily I said, sure, I can do that. And you know, it's amazing because I mean, arguably Bulbasaur is one of the top five most known Pokemon, if not top three, besides Pikachu and Charmander. Yeah, for sure. So didn't know. We, we didn't know, but they, but they didn't even know. Like it wasn't as if they were like, here's this amazing gift of, cause you're so top. They were just like, try that. Like they, it was a hit in Japan, but it hadn't, it obviously wasn't a hit here yet. And, you know, we still don't really know what's coming up in upcoming episodes. Like we're, we're behind too. Like we could find out now more easily because of it, the internet. I mean, we had the internet then, but. I will say I'm so blessed to have my mom because like she was the one person in my life that, you know, um, respected every fandom I had. So Pokemon was like a huge thing What'd for me. Call? I'm sorry, what'd it's, you call it? It's Pokemon. Po <laughs> okay. It's Pokemon. Yeah. So so your mom respected that you liked Pokemon. Yep. Yeah, Go Pokemon. I, <laughs> you're going to be doing that all because you're correcting 26 years of me saying Pokemon. You know that, right? Yes. But yeah. but, but that time you didn't even say Pokemon. You said Pokemon. Oh, it's okay. It's Pokemon. You're going to go nuts when I say Pokemon. <laughs> oh no, I like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. she, I so she can't beat Chris up, so I can't. And yeah, I no. Her, like, she, that's so funny because she thinks she can beat me up. That's hilarious. I can't beat you up oh, well, that's I funny. You Either way, it's easily. Right. No, no, I'm kidding. So, okay, go on. Sorry. Okay, so yeah, she respected everything I wanted to buy. So, like, say for example, if I bought these Pikachu cards, like that, she understood. Pikachu. Like, Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, she understood that I should be willing, you know, able to buy it. So I remember going to Toys R Us and like having all these kids on mats everywhere surrounding <laughs> the Toys R Us you know, doing Pokemon battles, right? So I, I remember the craze back in the late 90s. You're the and perfect age for it. Yeah. You're the abso exact. Absolutely. It's, I, I hit that peak age. So it, it was full steam at the beginning of your career, technically. How did you handle the success of the character at that time? Um, luckily, there was no social media. I, we didn't know. I mean, we were in such a bubble. Um, to me, it was it was cool because my cousins, my little cousins, liked it, and it made me cool with them, <laughs> and that was <laughs> that was exciting enough for me. I mean, I knew kids were into it. Like I would see kids playing with it on the subway, and I so I actually did hear kids doing my voice. I mean, it was that's like kind of heady stuff. Um, but because I'm not, I wasn't on camera. Our egos don't get that big because no one recognizes you. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna correct that. There's a lot of people that we know that their egos get really big. You, yes. Tara, are the exception because everything that we've ever done for your career, you're you have no head about it. Oh, you're, you're like sweet. no, you're what, sweet. you're like whatever. Let's do it. Let's have fun. You know. So, <laughs> yeah. you, Tara yeah, Sands, guys, is the perfect client. Like people as agents go through their entire career and not find the kind of client that Tara is. So that's, that's it. Not, yeah. <laughs> so stop. Yeah. No, yeah, I know. No. But but again, even back then, because I think a lot of that has to do with social media. You know, back then, voiceover people were kind of like the black sheep of acting. Like we we didn't get the respect necessarily. Oh, I know. And the anime was so frowned upon. So people were like, yeah. anime. Oh, you're doing anime and non union. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tisk 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 tisk. You know, now everybody wants to be an anime star. Totally. So. Well, we weren't getting rich. We weren't like we were part of this amazing, exciting thing. But our lives very much stayed the same. So whereas if we had been doing the same, if we had had that same kind of notoriety with our faces, our lives would have been turned upside down. Right. So, and I'm certainly not the kind of person that tells people what I do. You know, I, like Eric. Me too. So like, I get Eric's it. Stuart will like be like, hi, what's up? I happen to play Brock and James. Like he's, yeah. he's just more comfortable with that. Um, so my life didn't really change. It was exciting. And, you know, I was, when I, see the other cast members it's cool because we have this amazing we were talking about this the other day like we have this amazing bond of being part of this moment of in time that I, I you know i haven't really seen duplicated i mean that thing took off with a bang um it went from like zero to seven thousand in, in no time 
you know, and by, you know, the, I think the first time we all really realized it was we had recorded, we did the first Pokemon movie and we're at the premiere and it was at the Ziegfeld theater in New York. And there's like a huge line and, and where we actually had assigned seats. I mean, like it was, that was exciting. We had seats, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. and I, we all kind of looked at each other and we're like, Oh, whoa, this is, this is real. I remember um, sitting in theaters watching, I think it was Mewtwo. Or, yeah. yeah I, and I was just like blown away as a kid because the animation is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, there's some really it, pretty stuff in there, yeah. There's some, pr you know, beautiful scenes in Pokemon. And people don't, I think sometimes they don't value the art form of how amazing the, the effort that goes into all yeah. that artwork. A lot of the animators that are overseas doing that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that that form is just not replicated now. It's, well, you know, it's, it's different now. It's, yeah. and that's what's kind of been cool about going back to it and seeing the different art style, uh, just the changes over the years that it's sustained, but they've changed with the times, which I, you know, you have to do. Um, I think if people went back to the nostalgia though, I think that it would be a lot more successful, but that's just my personal opinion. Who knows? I mean, the, and, and I think that's why they're smart, like, Drink Hansen's. Um, You're not sorry. drinking your Bulbasaur drink yet. <laughs> I will never open this is the thing because I don't know when I'm ever going to get another one. And it's also apple flavored and I don't know how I feel about that. You just launched a challenge for all your followers. I know. Now you're going to no, no, get like 30 <laughs> apple cider drinks that you're never going to drink. So. Go nope. do it. I will not drink it. Um, I get, I get stomach aches from apples. So anything it's not appealing to me stomach aches from apples really interesting really. yeah right. what a great tidbit uh <laughs> what are we talking about? i don't know thanks uh, for oh, watching oh. celeb works live where you learn tara sands cannot eat apples thank you you know yeah, you want to know what it is it's called <laughs> fructose malabsorption and i can't eat fruits that have more fructose than sucrose or i get a stomach ache you're welcome it was funnier when you said you just couldn't eat out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I agree. It's a terrible, it's just a terrible interview. Um, <laughs> Don't, uh, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> but he'll use that in a thing. Yeah, we will. Yeah, I know. Here, I'll do it more. I'll do. I'll stay more still. Wait here. There we I, go. That's a screenshot. For later. It is. It's perfect. Uh, so, as you know, I have a I have a baseball card shop. Right? Yes. And so. Being that, uh, you know, I've been around cards, like, literally my whole life, when, when Pokemon cards came out, I was like, what? What the hell are these things? Like, this is stupid. And then as time went on... You weren't a child, either. Well, no, no, it wasn't... It was, blasphemy! Blasphemy, no, it sir! My, it wasn't for my age group. Like, I was certainly too old to care about Pokemon. Yeah. So, I mean, since then, I've obviously... I understand that it's a big thing, and it's cool, and I, I appreciate it, of course. But it's funny, because my roommate... Um, you just like, lost yeah. everyone, Chris. Lost the entire audience Don't calling stop. a Pokemon card stupid. Stop. I'm getting them back in a minute here. Let me so going, okay? I'm, I'm spinning the web. Hold on. So, oh. anyways. Want to talk about Digimon? Okay. My, room, my, <laughs> my roommate, he came home one day and he had the original, the, the 99, oh. like 99 Charizard. He had like two of them graded. And I was like, why the hell do you have those? And this was like a while ago. And I looked those up the other day and I was like, my lord god these things are like stupid expensive now so my question is do you have any of the original bulbasaur cards uh yeah they're not that uh the very very basic original bulbasaur card is uh not a not a hard find no um there are there i don't have anything um rare or worth money i don't think well, that's i have a lot of the basic <laughs> Yeah, no, I wish I did. What I do, what I collect, see, this is where my geekiness comes in. And we've probably talked about this. I have a Pez dispenser collection. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, I know. That's I have so like cool. over 600 Pez dispensers. That's so cool, though. Do you remember, it. Tara, I'm sorry to get off subject, but yeah, do you remember yeah. the shop in Universal that was only Pez? Yes. It's still there, it isn't called, it? Um, no, it's not. It's not. It's, it's not weird. there. No, it's, it's not, not there. The Pez shop is completely gone. Meaning but it, it wasn't it, called the Pez shop. It had like a... Bigs bees or it has a why like, buzz. Yeah, no, yeah. Sparkies, right? What was it? Sparkies. Sparkies. sparkies yeah. yeah. Sparkies. Yeah. I'm for sure it was still there. If well, it's still there, they removed all the Pez stuff. That's yeah, the only yeah. reason if I brought this up. Gone. Yeah, okay, it's that's it. I'm looking it up now. I'm that's going fine. to go ahead. I don't I think they changed the name too, but I'm not sure. 
Right. But that was such a cool thing to go to. So like, say, how did, how did you find new pets? Like what, what, how do you collect? It's like, there. I started before eBay. What? Okay. It's you there. Want... It's, it's, I'm looking it up right now. It says Sparky's is still open. But there's no Pez there. Oh, oh, okay. So they took, we're Pez talking from... about Pez, Chris, go away. So back that there, way, no. she just walked downstairs. Yeah, that's Kevin. It's uh, Hi, Chris's Kevin. nephew. Hey. <laughs> that's my nephew, Kevin. Hi, it's nephew, like, Kevin. It's, it's like Mr. It's like um, Mr. Rogers. We're like, who's who's coming in today? So, I love that. Our podcast producer Gary is going to have a hell of a time know, cutting this gonna, episode. He's going to hate us. <laughs> I think it's all gold. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> collecting. Let's talk about collecting because yes. I'm into that. And I know a lot of you guys who are watching have nerdy collections too. Um, so it was a lot more fun when it started. I, I had uh, just moved to New York and I, it's a long story, I graduated a little bit early and um, I didn't have as many friends and I, I wanted like a hobby, like I was doing theater and stuff, but I wanted like a collection. I just felt like it would be a fun hunt. And I had a couple Pez dispensers and like, that's a, that would be a fun collection. And I would go to like antique stores and flea markets in New York City. And it just, it was sort of more for the seeking it out. And back then again, before eBay, people didn't know what they had necessarily. And it, it, the, the search was so much fun. Uh, now it's sort of about money. And I used to I used to love that when there was no eBay because yeah uh, it was so hard to like especially for baseball cards I mean if there were rare sets you're, the only way you could do it is if you went to a convention yeah or you went to every card shop around and I've I mean, been to two now. Pez conventions <laughs> there's a Pez convention That's that is so amazing cool. next yeah. time you go you got to tell us and we'll go with you uh, it's <laughs> we'll I can't go. go anywhere but we'll you know go. what it is it's like it, it before eBay or before you know internet really it was an it was a level playing field because it if you were willing to put the time and work in you could find stuff now it's about spending the money to get rare stuff now um, I, do you have any rare pez in your collection i have old ones i so basically the thing with pez you know how they have the little feet on the bottom yeah. if they don't have the feet they're much older right so i have oh, a lot okay. with no feet you know a bunch That's of the cool. disney characters and some smurfs and uh stuff like that um, I, I have a friend that actually combines the Pez, which Bulbasaur has a Pez, I think, right? Finally. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's so cool. Is that trippy? Like to see, like that's the one thing you collect to have see Bulbasaur have a Pez? Like that's nuts to me. It would have been even cooler if it had come out when I was still on the show. Like it came out last year or whatever. So it was a little late, but. Yeah, um, but it's still it, pretty it, exciting. It is still pretty exciting. And I have a friend that actually just gets them all signed. And that's I, I heard think, you told me that. that's so cool. And he literally has hundreds of them signed by people. That's hundreds. a I love that idea. When they you said are. he does a cool thing where he opens them and <laughs> he, has them and, yeah, on, the on the white part. White part, yeah. Yeah. Because I've Which, signed some for people. I, I have them on my Etsy shop, like if people want to buy signed um so I was playing with a rubber band and it fell. Sorry. Uh <laughs> don't worry. Wait, I don't want you to worry. There's uh, no rubber band. I, I'm not worried. But you know what's kind of funny is the one thing you collect is something where you can snap the head back, you know? I'm just, Pop it off if you're mad. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I sometimes ask people, like, do you want me to sign on the side of it or on the inside of it? And your friend is the only one who I've, who's ever I've seen that gets the inside signed. Well, it's weird because you can't sign the outside of a Pez. It's, it has it, got that grooves yeah, and edges impossible. and stuff. I can Oh, you can? I figured okay. it out. Uh, See, she, I can she's show a, you. Wait, here. Let's yeah, do. please do. <laughs> dun, 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 we'll do a giveaway. Dun, dun, we'll we'll dun, do a giveaway dun. with this one at some point. Here. Okay. I wonder which one that is. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot. Of you know, we, sh we we can even do it right now. If you guys share the feed, we will we will give it away to whoever uh, will, you it. know, will random. random it. We'll I randomize mean. it. So share this feed and we will randomize this later. I love that idea. And she'll sign it. Yeah. So it's not really like anything. I, I just kind of go over the bumps. Ah. Okay. Um, but again, like obviously, like I don't do anything crazy, but I sign on the bumps. It's not ideal. Your hand's in the way, by the way. Yeah, so. Oh. <laughs> That's actually oh, yeah. really nice. It looks good. good. And then I kind of embellish it. Like I'll try to fix. I'll, I'll like I'll do a little heart like on the, like this flat part of it. I think I think I own like maybe like six different pets. That's probably about it. Hmm. It's not too late, Chris. It's not. Too I know. Late. I think I should start. 
Right. So there's a lot of other collecting things. I mean, I know people play Pokemon Go and collect all collect them all. So I, do you play Pokemon Go? I did when it first came out and I was obsessed because, um, but I didn't play. <laughs> See, again, it's like the collector. You guys get this. The collector in me just was about finding and catching and not battling. Like I didn't go out at midnight and like meet up with a group and take a, what are those things called? Um, yeah. Uh, I forgot, but I haven't played in a while. But I loved collecting the Pokemon. That was, to me, that was the fun of it. And it made, I never collected the cards. So it made me understand that obsession. Right. Because, um, you know, another thing, it was random too. So you could go out and get like 10 of the same character just by being in the same region. And then you get that one and it'll drive you to keep doing it, you know. And I loved when you made eye contact with someone else who was clearly playing. <laughs> and you're like oh and then you're like oh they just did this like it, there was a com i love the camaraderie like they i i thought they did just such a great job with it being um uh something where you would bury your head in your phone and still be around other humans i thought that was like kind of the most beautiful thing about that got you yeah. into the real world and to me that's like one of the things i'm so afraid of is we're all in our own little you know before this pandemic uh just in our own little bubble on our own little phone um, and you I know, thought that was, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because it's like, that's the one thing I learned about all this is that I have learned not to be on my phone as much. And it's really taught me that, you know, human interaction with people. No, it's true, Chris. Really. I'm going BS on this one. I'm sorry. Well, I know it's not BS because <laughs> really? he, no seconds you're on your phone. Stop. He, will, he will text me and I don't respond for four hours. So well, I know. Now for you fact, do. Yeah. No, now he's not telling you the world. It's going to be different. What do you think I'm talking about, Chris? I'm talking about the pandemic. So oh, that, that doesn't count. That of course it does. It, of course. The whole point is to teach you to go Perfect forward camera. and change your. It doesn't matter. So I'm trying to have a moment here, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> try. Just you try. We'll stop you. Yeah, okay. no. So I'm saying I've learned a lot through this pandemic. So essentially, when I get out, I want to do things differently, and I hope a lot of people do. And I, Chris, I, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, Chris. I want to hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I can't believe good. I'm taking shit from Mr. Clean. So keep oh, going. Oh yeah, I just shaved today too, man. Oh, oh I can tell. Crazy. Well, this is oh, the Ducky and Mr. Clean show. I love. Oh, it. that's good, yeah. Ducky and Mr. Clean. That's hilarious. You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, they have there's like a pokey. Like I I've never played the game. Is it called a pokey stop? On the sure, game? sure. Yeah, go with that. Like, yeah. There's like a there's like a spot like right outside my house. So there's constantly people out here. Still. Are they yeah, still still, to this so day, every so oh, often, so there's a whole herd of people outside my house. I'm like, what are you guys doing? For people who haven't heard, you actually returned to Pokemon uh, this year as the voice of Pokemon as the voice oh. of yeah. well, hey. I was actually just going to say Pokemon Journeys, um, yeah. which is the season we're working on now, um, actually incorporates the Pokemon Go game. Um, so like, they'll hold it up and be like, what do they have? And my computer keeps going weird um so it's cool to see in the show the show reflecting the um actual game so absolutely and you've you're the voice of yamper is that how you say it yes wait i have yamper. one what it was what, what is it like to sort of rejoin the cast of po pokemon uh after all these years it's awful and i want to show you this. look how cute he is oh that's cute he, he's great i love him yeah so um it was it was really cool i mean i uh so Lisa Ortiz is the director of Pokemon and um, she wasn't directing back in the day, but we are old college friends and we were able to stay in touch because we were both doing all this anime work. And uh, she gave me the heads up that the, this season was going to be a bi-coastal cast. Uh, and so I didn't, we did, and we still don't necessarily know because a lot of old characters are coming back from pre, from early, early episodes. Uh, we still don't know if some of my old characters will be coming back. So I was like, fingers crossed, I get to play someone new. And I went and auditioned. And um, it was, it's different. Um, so if, so like when I do the Bulbasaur voice, I'm very clearly saying Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur. It's, we were, uh, that was sort of how we recorded it. I know, it's weird. I love it. I'm just, I'm just used to it now. It never it was, gets We, were, we <laughs> enunciated. <laughs> Well, we enunciated the uh, the character names when we did the voices, and now the voices of the Pokemon are more animalistic. So I get to like be more of a dog. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of like I think of them as sloppy. Oh my god! Or, 
and um in that that's just a different approach to it which is kind of fun you know what i mean like but it took it's weird when you're back in the booth and you feel like you you're such an expert i'm like i did how many episodes of this but especially because it's lisa and someone I, who's been working on it for so long and obviously i do whatever she tells me to um and it's fun it's fun to be directed and and work in this different way it's it's weird because it's just different but um it's really fun. I, you know, I made the mistake of doing another voice that hurts my throat, which is was my own fault. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? I like how it sounds, but. Now, you went from another, I, from one iconic series to another iconic series uh, a few years later. Everybody knows Yu-Gi-Oh! And you play Mokuba, yes, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Great. I got it right. So, Mokuba. Tell, can you tell us how you got cast Mokuba. in that? I just thought it was just an audition, honestly. Um, I wish it was a better story. Uh, but again, we were all part of like this four kids. Um, I, I thought of us as like a repertory company over at four kids. We all kind of bounced from one show to another. You know, some shows we auditioned for, some we didn't. Um, a lot of times they'd just be like, "Do you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. That was one I did have to read for. And again, it, you know, if it wasn't for that day of, of seeing Veronica Taylor recording that boy voice, I, it just would never have been my, something I pursued. So I'm super grateful again. Like, and I just, we kind of learned in the booth what we could do. It wasn't like I went home and started practicing voices. It would be like, Hey, there's an 80 year old lady in the corner there now play the two year old boy. And, and you just said, okay, okay, I'll do it. And if it was terrible, they didn't use it. And if it was good, they were like, okay, great. Now, it people, was very people, different. People love that character. I mean, I see them come up to the table and they want to he hear you do it. I mean, it's it's just well, amazing the connection that that little boy has to so many people. He's the right age. Um, he's the age that a lot of them would have been where a lot of those characters are like teenagers and older. He was the little brother. Um, and I don't have any brothers or sisters, but I imagine that being a younger sibling of a very powerful older brother who you idolize really probably resonated with a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And the card too. I know the card because it's so powerful in that universe. Like that's another reason why that character is so popular, right? Well, it's his brother. I don't have a card. No, I, no, no. I no, I know you don't have a card, but the the the, the blue the, eyes white dragon. Blue eyes white dragon. I remember being a kid and trying to font connect them all. Like I think there's five of them, right? And the I, thing is with Pokemon, uh, Pokemon, but this is Yu-Gi-Oh. The same thing is the foil on each of these cards made these series so popular. It's because right. people wanted to collect the foil cards. You know, well, it was like this great thing that came at entertainment from all angles. It was like. There's a game, there's a show, there's a movie, there's a, you know, and right. you got sucked into the whole world of it, which I don't remember having anything like that as a kid that I was into all aspects of, of a property like that. Yeah, um, Chris maybe. had Green I Acres, for Disney. God's sake. So. I had Green Acres. <laughs> yeah, Green Acres didn't have a card game. Ding -dong. No, but Disney, Disney would have been, the, the, shut up. No, it was MASH, right? <laughs> but I didn't have like a, do yeah. <laughs> It was the different strokes board game that we played. That's you know, right. 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 It's called, what you talking about, Willis? In the Gary Coleman yeah. edition. I collected Absolutely. all the facts of life cards. I love well, I believe that. I, I believe that. Cards. There weren't any. No, if there no, were, okay. I wouldn't have them. I if think they, they actually made cards. cards. I think they made facts of life cards. I think they did. I swear to God. It wasn't like a game. I, I think oh, there's like the, with, the, with card. the bad gum. Yeah. yeah, the trading cards, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure they had yeah. trading cards. Yeah. But those weren't the same. That's not the same yeah. as like a hardcore collection. See, for us old guys. That, that's, that's offensive to me because that's all I collected when I was a kid. Entertainment trading cards. That's all I collected. So What about Garbage Pail Kids? Those I, are I, love. I, I have that and Wacky Packages. I have, I ha yeah, I have my Garbage Pail I, I, I have a bunch of sets from, you know, the last... 30 years of wacky packages and garbage pail kids. Here's the bummer though, because you have an unusual name. There was no garbage pail kid with your name on it. <laughs> and That's that was okay. The most exciting day. Don't we worry. I'll make one for him. <laughs> we should make one for him. Nerdy Mary. Oh, I'm working on it. Nerdy Mary. Is it, is it, what was yours, Chris? What was the Chris card? Uh, God, I don't even remember. Uh, I don't remember. I'm at the thing. Cause really? nobody, Cause mine, mine, mine was kind of dirty. It was what? Mine was kind of dirty. It was a lamp and it said, turned on Tara. 
Oh, yes. I do remember that. And I was like, oh, oh God. God. Oh yeah. my God, that's so funny. But I was excited when I got when I think I, that was like it. in the third series. I had to wait. Yeah. It wasn't no, definitely wasn't in the my, first my garbage bill. So are you... that, that was a big day. That's why I get these people collecting this stuff because I remember the day that I got the tarot card and I bought a crap ton of packs just to oh, get it. Oh mine was Crater Chris. What do you have? Like Crater Face? Yeah. Hmm. Oh no, Chris Hiss is the other one too. That was the one from eight, 1985 when I was a kid. So that's the Chris one. Chris what? What was that one? Chris, Chris Hiss. Hiss. Yeah. He's like a, he's like a greaser. It's and he's weak. not like a snake. Oh, a greaser? Like a hair a hair greaser? Or yeah. no, well, like 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 yeah, like the movie Grease. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Hiss. So he's he's like a snake of some sort. I don't know. <laughs> Weird. That's it, they're horrible weak sauce. But it's you terrible. know I have a bad garbage belt kid. Yours is way better, Tara. I don't have one, so I yeah, don't feel I'll bad for you. Okay. Oh, good. and there's Chris Mess too. Oh, uh, that's funny. I like a pun. It's a little bit like better. A pun. So, for a lot of people that don't know, you were also did live action hosting. You did had a couple great years on the car, on Cartoon Network uh, for right. Fridays. How did you get that role? Because that's such a different, you know, it's a jump. I love that. Um, I had never hosted anything before, but the idea of hosting a show was always very exciting to me. Um, I auditioned for it when it first came out. I did not get it. Um, and then they were looking for a replacement host about a year later. And I was like, oh, they don't like me. Um, and I went in and it, it just felt really good. And I had a call back and then I, I flew to LA for our, um, to do like a chemistry read with Tommy, who was the other host. Um, and it was like my first screen test. Like they flew me out. It was very exciting. Um, and I, it was my dream. That was my dream job. Hosting. What's funny is I, I did, my other dream job was doing cartoons and at Cartoon Network, they, they didn't know that that's what I did necessarily. They were like the cartoon department was completely separate from huh. what we were doing. So I was like, but can I be on the cartoons too? And they're like, you're on camera. And I'm like, but Who are you? <laughs> so. You know what? I've seen some of those episodes and you're terrific as a host because you, oh, you, you. You, you don't have limits with these people. Like you'll say whatever you want to them. And most of the time they laugh, which is great. Sometimes there's interviewers that when you say something and you're meant to be funny the, and the guy doesn't laugh, but with these guys, they were laughing, you know? Sometimes. I mean, they edited it. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> George Lucas was not amused by my questions. At oh, all. but you see that he's not amused. No, so. but I'm saying that was a much longer interview. Ah, uh, got it. But got it, when, it. when it's for a kid's show, you can, you can get away with certain things. And also I wasn't going to ask certain serious questions on a kid's show. And I, I my, I mean, to be completely honest, my hero for interviewing style is Howard Stern because he gets people comfortable. He completely disarms them. He makes them forget that people are listening and they think they're just having a conversation with him and they start to spill their guts. That wasn't what I was doing, but stylistically, it's what I love. So I was, I wanted to ask the silliest questions ever because it loosened them up, you know? They, they had, you gotta, like, if you're doing a, a movie, like, so let's say I was interviewing Johnny Depp and he was going from room to room answering the same questions. So when we sat down and I got to say, like, first of all, the first thing he said to me, he looked at my toenails and he said, blue toes, well done. I was like, oh my God. Um, and, and then I just started asking him about candy and about, like, just nonsense, like, and I think everyone else was asking about the character and about the original. And it was for, sorry, I should have um, clarified. This was for Willy Wonka. Um, it was the Willy Wonka junket. So you got to remember, these people are so bored of answering the same questions. So, you know, I'd say, like, I'd start with, like, what's your favorite pizza topping? Just to throw them off a little bit. Because they were so used to hearing, what was it like playing this role? And I was like, uh, no, the kids don't want to know that. Yeah. They want to hear silly things. They so. want to know your what favorite pizza topping. And what's your favorite Wonka candy, Tara? Johnny Depp answered that his favorite candy was Necco wafers. And I was like, Ugh. That's not a candy. That's I not mean, a candy. That's chalk. It? Well, it's we chalk. Yeah, it, it, it it's chalk. Is. It's chalk. My, it my mom likes Necco I was, wafers. I should have been like, you're incorrect, sir. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> yeah. Depp went from here 
to hear. <laughs> yeah. You should have gotten you, sir. You lose. You, you lose. lose. Yeah. Good day, sir. That's Good what you should have done. I should have stormed out. Absolutely. It's so like, okay, thank you. And then turn And then, and then scream, et cetera, et cetera, as you're I should walking have out. I vomited right onto him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Uh, what a missed opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it was cool though. I was looking through old pictures of that today actually. And I found some old ones with like Charles Barkley. And I mean, we interviewed Robin Williams and I just, wow. I mean, just icons. I, I was so lucky to have that. And then when we weren't interviewing people, we got to do like sketches, like, like character sketches and play with kids. And it was awesome. It was so, and bands came on the show. Um, it was the best job ever. I would do so it cool. again in a heartbeat. So my my sneaking suspicion is you had to fly from New York to LA to do this, right? Is, no, so we shot in Atlanta. You guys shot mm -hmm. in Atlanta? I had no this, clue. Uh, Turner is based in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. So if you remember, you remember uh, dinner in a movie that yes. uh, it was like that. It's like basically the commercial breaks. We shot in the same space as they did because we uh, had the same format and the same crew. Um. So. That was when I moved to LA because I realized I could kind of live anywhere and they were going to have to fly me to Atlanta to shoot anyway. Um, so. Always I liked living in Atlanta while you were filming though. I went for like a week a month. It was really, oh, wow. I lived in a hotel for like five days or whatever. Um, yeah, it was awesome. I was, I called myself tri-coastal at that point because I was like kind of in New York and LA and, and then it, I finally was settled did you in. They had that big, the big, what is it, the CNN hotel? That big no. one? No. The no, one I didn't even know there was one. We they have, yeah, they have like this giant, it's, you know, downtown where they have the Ferris wheel and stuff. Oh, no. Like, oh, we were in complex and it's insane. I was there for last year, I was there for MomoCon and I oh, sent yeah. Nuri a video and they were playing something. It had to have been like Yu Gi Oh! something like right outside my oh, that's window. Cool. So I like went out on the balcony and have a video of me going, look, I can't go to sleep because of this. There's like a sea of people playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, it was so loud. I don't know how anybody loud. could sleep. Like, and... That sounds like my worst nightmare. Absolutely. Yeah. You would so, never let yeah, me no, book you at that hotel. We stayed some, a hotel in Midtown because it was near where we were. We would film early. And we it was like I'd get there and it was a three-hour time difference. So we'd start early and I'd be exhausted and, you know. But it was it was honestly the best best job. So out of all of your um, all of your gigs, all of your characters, everything, what was your favorite? I mean, did you have something where you're just like, this is my favorite and I love Fall Guys? can't answer that. All the other ones, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Come on, there's got to be one. There's got to be one favorite. It's like no, saying, I, you I know, can you pick a kid? Much. Oh, you I mean, for on-camera work, that was obviously the best. For, for cartoons, I mean, there's like different periods of my life that I enjoy different things. Like Shaman King was such a pleasure after doing so many um, like boy roles and difficult vocal roles, Shaman King, I just got to be like bossy, but good hearted and just talk like this and be, you know, and not hurt myself. <laughs> um, that was, I loved that, that show. Uh, then, you know, there's another period of my life where probably working on Generator Rex was a huge highlight because I got to actually record with other people in the booth and in anime, we are alone, uh, which is, not you know <laughs> what? which is lonely it is it's lonely and you, you you don't become an actor really to work by yourself you become an actor to interact <laughs> right um, acting is reaction that's yeah. what I say. and one of the things is uh, i think is lost is you know the lack of you know a community reading and i don't understand why people don't do that now of course now that the coronavirus has happened it's probably will never happen again but I think that there's a a greater sense of feeling and community when you yeah. guys when you guys are doing it in a group. Um, well, and with anime, I mean, you're so limited based on you know the lip flap and all those. Uh, so, so it's it's more t it's a much more technical job than it when you have new animation and you do get to go to a group record. Um, but those are going to be not going to happen for a long time. <laughs> so, right, I know. And video games we also do alone. But I've had some amazing um, acting experiences in video games. Like, got to work on Dead Island and uh, have had some like um, I would literally they had me sobbing in the booth and just I mean really emotional stuff that was you kind of remember why you got started in this. I, I actually played that game. That's actually a pretty fun game. Yeah, I tried to. I'm terrible at games, but I tried. Like, so the Fire Emblem series. I mean, <laughs> I know you you play uh, Sonya yes. on the Fire Emblem series. 
what what's that process like? Is it is it a totally different process for you? It's different because well, it's a, it's again it's a dubbed game as opposed to a brand new game like like Dead Island. So sometimes you're kind of locked in to uh, timing timing things. I'll be like, okay, do this excerpt in under two seconds or make it four seconds long, and it that does become more technical. It it's a really fun game to work on because the characters are pretty broad and fun and juicy. Um, but it is different than some of these other games that like The Last of Us or Red Dead Redemption where these where they're starting from scratch and creating a brand new character. So the blueprint is already there for me when I go in and record something like Fire Emblem, which is fun in its own right because I find there's like freedom in in putting parameters on something. There's there is something fun about that. But they're all very different. Like it's just learning different ways of working. I was cutting your demo in December, not a demo, but I, I like a pitch, a pitch reel for yeah. conventions. And I was cutting a lot of the villains that you've played. And I mean, I, I think you're phenomenal actually as some of the villains. I think you should Thank you. do more of that. And I hope people <laughs> out there hire you for more of that. But I was actually getting, I was, it was a lot of fun because you mentioned Generator X, Rex. Uh, and I cutting those scenes, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I mean, I know they altered your voice just a little bit, but. Oh no, you're thinking of something else, uh, but cause I wasn't bad in that one, but I was really mean in Sailor Moon. There was a Sailor Moon where I was really- And then was it JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? You yeah, were also that's valid. probably it. That's, that's, that's it. it. Uh, yeah, no, phenomenal. I was, I was so happy to do that. They did an like, effect on my voice, but that yeah. was, that was intense. What's funny about that show, I don't know how much time we have, but um, they There's warn the, you- As much time as you want. I don't want to bore everybody. No, um, they're not bored. <laughs> but JoJo's, for those of you who watch JoJo's, um, it's a weird, disturbing show. Um, and they warned me before I came in. They said, hey, there's going to be a lot of yelling. Are you okay with that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll schedule things around it so I'm, I'm vocally okay. And uh, they did not tell me, though, that my character was a baby who was evil and would be forced to eat his own poop by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I have like a terrible gag reflex. So I was like recording this, like almost throwing up in oh the book. I was like, God. that would have been a good warning. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger warning. Yeah, that was a really disturbing. I definitely creeped people out. Like it was creepy, but it was really fun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is Sorry, gonna be the this is the worst transition of all time, Tara. <laughs> Good. That was my goal. For, for people who don't know, <laughs> you're phenomenal at jewelry making. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Uh, I, I wouldn't even know how to get from eating let's poop. Let's not. Let's not. Let's just skip. Let's just end on poop. <sighs> Can't, can't do it but you know okay. people who don't know i mean in terms of fandoms and stuff like that i mean you make dungeons and dr dragon jewelry right well yeah i i realized i started making jewelry just like because i was bored and i needed a hobby that i could do with my hands um and so i started making jewelry and then people at conventions were like you should make more geek like geek stuff and i started looking at what was available and there was no like higher end geek stuff. There's a lot of like cheap, like tchotchke kind of stuff. And I was like, these Dungeons and Dragons, I have, I have friends who, you know, do critical role and stuff. And, and Sam Regal was like, make some nice dice stuff. And I was like, that's a great idea. Um, and uh, I started like learning how to drill holes in dice. And it was just, honestly, it was fun. And it sort of yeah, cool. became like a little side project. And, and, it, I, and you have an Etsy, right? So what is yeah, the Etsy? Etsy? Where can people... Well, where can people buy this stuff oh, and check it problem. out? Loopedla.etsy.com. I say it's jewelry for the geek and the chic. I love I like that. It. I like it. It's a good <laughs> pitch. I like it. It's so, perfect. So for, for the people out there that are watching that are aspiring voice actors, yes. what, what would your advice to those people be? I do not give great advice, but I, I send them <laughs> to some people who do. Um, I, I D. Bradley Baker has a website that's phenomenal. I want to be a voice actor dot com. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's great. Uh, Steve Bloom has uh, something called Bloombox in uh, Facebook where people can share information. Um, you guys, 
you guys are so lucky now to like be able to share all these resources and have, you know, I didn't have any of this when I started. So I'm, I'm really envious. Um, there's, I, I, when people do ask me that, I go, listen, there's an amount of research you have to do first and an amount of work before, I'll, before I'll help you <laughs> or right. give you advice. Like, you know, take your acting classes, take your voice classes, do all that basic stuff. Um, and then this is, and then start marketing yourself and then specific voiceover classes. And if there's a whole process to it, it's not uh, just about having a great voice. Um, it's about the acting. It's about a lot more than that. And again, it's, you know, you're fortunate enough to be able to find so many great resources on how to do all this um, and help each other. Like I, I see people helping each other, like asking about different microphones and, and it's awesome. It's, it's just a different playing field than it was. And again, because I started so long ago, my, you know, I was in a singing competition at the Y, my experience doesn't really help everyone else. Right. Um, but again, like people are discovered on YouTube now. Make a, you know, do some voices on YouTube. Someone might see it. That's all it takes sometimes. Um, but you have to really be willing to put the vo the work in, um, be willing to take rejection. I mean, I just sit and audition all day, every day. And it's just, it, my, most of my career is just rejection. Um, there's less time in the booth working than there is uh, doing the other stuff. I, I just, it's a, it's an awesome, awesome job and I love it, but you have to want to really want to do it to get into it. I think that's stellar advice. And you said that's you don't great. know how to give advice, but that I was great. like that, but like, I can't, like, I can't get down into like the nuts and bolts. That's what those other people are really good at. Well, I think sometimes simplistic is better. And I think you did a great job of it. Um, and, uh, you know, we, at, in order to end the show, we've been generally doing a, like a voice actor spotlight, a voiceover spotlight. So I'm going to name, if you're okay with this, I'm going to name some of your iconic characters and then you do what you do best. And Chris, if I remember them, I will do that. Yeah. I'll make funny faces and stuff. No, you won't, Chris. No, Please you won't. Do. Um, okay. So I'm going to start can it I off. Do the, wait, can I do them into this echo microphone? Echo. I don't really know how to use this. Echo. I don't know. That. I have dumb, I just have dumb stuff surrounding me. Okay. Okay. So ready? No. Well, Bulbasaur and Pokemon. Bulbasaur, sorry, Bulba. Fampy and Pokemon. Fampy, fan. Is that Fampy? Fampy, fan, Fampy. I think that was what he sounded like. Clefairy and Pokemon. Clefairy, 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 Clefairy. Oddish yeah. and Pokemon. Oddish. Oddish, odd, odd, oddish, oddish, oddish. Richie and Pokemon. Oh, he sounded like this. We had to be like, he fought Ash and we had to make sure he didn't sound too much like Ash. But he was very confident. Worm, Wormple on Pokemon. Wormple, Wormple, Wormple. Kari and Digimon Adventure. Oh, she sounds like this. She, um, well, now she does. She's, uh, what was I going to say back? I love Kari. Um, I'm still talking like her. I'm trying to think of how I can explain. <laughs> we have the new Digimon movie coming out soon. And it hopefully ties some stuff up for you guys. Sonia and Fire Emblem. Oh, well, she talks down here like this. She's very sultry and kind of over it all. Anna from Shaman King. Oh. Yo, you have to practice to be a ninja or you'll never be great. Mokuba. Oh, no, he's not a ninja, he's a shaman. Why did I say that? Yeah, he's a shaman. <laughs> she. Or he. No, she. It's she. Yo, you have to practice or you'll never be a great shaman. Do your sit-ups. Mokuba and Yu-Gi-Oh. Help, big brother, help. That's all he said. Literally, uh, I'd walk into the booth and be like, what happens this time? They're like, he gets kidnapped again. He, <laughs> he falls down the well. <laughs> <laughs> No, he did more than that. And I, I love Mokuba. I, I'm a, I, I adore Mokuba. So when he said that, he said, help me, brother, help. And Seto, Seto. Um, but he was, he, he's awesome. And that's what little brothers do. They get in trouble and you bail them out. So I, again, I think that is why people uh, were drawn to him because they could relate to being right. an annoying little brother. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, well. I would have loved to be an annoying sibling. I was I was the youngest of four. Of course you were. And I'm I the biggest. I'm six five, and none of them are over five nine. What? 
Yeah. Oh, uh, who's so? So your you, so your dad is just someone else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm the product of the mailman or something. <laughs> there, wow. So they mean there was hope for me to have been tall. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but I, are you a, are you an only child, though, uh, Tara? So then th there's no hope. It's not like you had a comparison to somebody else that was shorter or taller. Right? No, but I'm saying there was hope that I was that a tall person can be born to people who are not that tall. Got it. Okay, got it. Yeah. Now, yeah. another. But but it's, it's okay for you to be short, though. You're a girl. Girls, uh, guy, tall it's okay guys. For anyone to girls. be short, Christopher. I'm telling you, I I hit my head on stuff. I got a concussion last year. <laughs> He did. Like, but he walked into a tree, guys. Okay. That's not, was it above you? Where was the he tree? Tried, it was a low hanging branch, and I tried to avoid it, and I just clunk, and I got a concussion out of it. Oh, honey. Oh, he yeah. was got. He yeah, guys, but at least you can reach stuff. I'm all. I, 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 I should just carry a step stool with me. When, when I'm at the store, people walk up to me. Literally, I just I'm ready for it now. People like go to reach stuff, and I'm like, all right. And I just walk over there, and I'm like, yeah, well, I get it for you. <laughs> now with the pandemic, you can't ask people to reach stuff for you. I still do it. I'm a nice guy. I'm not. You have to go grocery shopping where you go. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> hey, sir. Sorry, Neri, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, oh, now, I'm always left with the worst transitions, guys. Thank I you so that. much. I love that. so happy. You know, we've approached the end of the show. Tara, I want to thank you so much you for coming on. didn't even answer your questions. Wait, I'm scrolling. Oh, we do. We have to do the, the, the uh -huh. answering of the questions. Well, sorry, Chris, okay, you let's, threw let's, me we'll, off. We'll wrap it up fast. Because uh, I was okay. waiting for I'm looking, forgive me. Oh, yeah. Kaiba and Mokuba go together like Elsa and Anna. Hey, Christy's watching. People Hi, Christy. asking questions. I'm looking. Hi, you guys. Okay, so Kendra oh, Lewis corrected me, saying that there was only four blue eyes, white dragon cards that existed. So really? I don't know. I guess I was wrong. Oh, Kendra no, would know. She knows. Because yeah. I, 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 I said five earlier. Um, uh, Kendra then again said you're an amazing host on Fridays and loved your silly interviews as a kid back Kendra, then. My ego's gonna blow up. <laughs> Kendra's awesome. Garen Gibbons says, I saw one of those videos where you and Tommy were actually interacting with the cartoon characters on the show. Oh, yeah, that was cool to do stuff with green screen. Yeah, that was really, again, I, it was also, I learned all that on the job. I had, I had zero experience really at all working on camera, just like student films and stuff. So that was so neat. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Okawa says, Kari's like the Annette Funicello of Digimon. That's pretty good. <laughs> I, that's a great quote. That's pretty good. I like that. Socky take... the Sock Puppet says, if a sock puppet like me encounters Bulbasaur, what would I do or say to it and why? Well, I assume that all you say is, Socky, Sock, Socky, Sock, Sock, Sock. <laughs> and then you'd be like, Bulbasaur, 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 Bulbasaur. And then you'd be like, Bulbasaur. And we'd both just be like, all right. And uh, I, I think... I think that's it. I don't think I think there's just a lot of people praising you for how great you are. So it's very easy to do. Oh, <laughs> you shut your mouth. I so miss you guys. so easy. I miss to seeing do. all of you guys in the scroll, and hopefully we'll all do that soon. Absolutely, and that that'll help us. Thank you so much for coming on, Tara. But before we leave, uh, can you tell people where they can find you, and if you have things to follow, anything to plug? Yeah. One thing um, I do want to mention to the people out there is that yes, you did. Tara is a fan. Uh, is currently one of the signers for this online convention company from Zobi Productions called V Shots. So if you want to send in an item or get an autograph signed, an eight by ten sign, go to vshouts.com and it's done by Zobi Productions. So it's really fun because and it's easy. You'll, you'll, it would, it's like with this, like you get to I'll, I'll sign it and know that it's for like we'll take there's a video component. Absolutely. So <laughs> I, I should not uh, be their spokesperson because that was terrible, but it's fun. It is fun. And then if you guys want, of course, a recorded video that there's also that element too that comes with every autograph. Yep. So yeah, so Zobi Productions, V Shout, uh, you can find me on Cameo because now that there's not uh, conventions, I want to make sure that there's access for everyone to get what they need. Um, I also have my Etsy shop where you can get signed uh, Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Shaman King cards, actually. And we have the new Yamper cards on there. Um, and that's that's sort of it. Oh, can you give them, give, give them the Etsy shop name again and give them your Twitter handle? Okay, wait, uh, here. Etsy is, that's my business card, loopedla.etsy.com. 
And then Twitter is at Tara Sands LA, and that's Instagram too, Tara Sands LA. It's so boring. I wish I had chosen something more interesting. <laughs> and then Facebook is just Tara Sands, Tara Sands. <laughs> I don't remember why that was what happened, but it is. Uh, it sounds oh. like it's good. Everybody check her out. Go to, go to yeah. everything there. Follow her on everything. Buy her jewelry. Buy her autographs. It'll be fun. Yeah. Thank you, Tara, for coming Thank on. Thank you, guys. This was Thank so much you, fun. Now, before we take off, Chris wants to tell you a few things. Chris, take it away. All right, if you really, oh. really want me to. <laughs> See, I'm already boring, Tara. No, I love him. Kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> our next show will return. It'll be next Sunday at 5 p.m. for our regular CelebWorks live show. And we want to announce our special guest for next week's program. It'll be none other than Miss Diane Pershing. The original voice of Poison Ivy from Batman the Animated Series. Somebody that, that Nuri and I hold near and dear to our heart uh, just as much as Tara. And uh, also, not to forget, on Thursdays we have a G.I. Joe uh, podcast also. Uh, that is at also at 5 p.m. Pacific. It's called Yojo Raps. And this week's guest for that show is going to be Jamie Sullivan. He's one of the current comic book artists for G.I. Joe. So we'll be talking to him on Thursday. So Thursday. Will you Thursday. be rapping? Yeah, no, no. not. I, I should make up one, but I'm not. So I, I'm saving that for karaoke with you. I'm going to practice now. I'm going to put some NWA on. I'll bring I'll bring Easy e with me at some point. Uh, uh, Nuri knows what I'm talking about. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. But nobody knows time. yet. Nobody <laughs> knows yet. So let's keep going. That's for another time. We'll, we'll keep that a secret. All right. Uh, so anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Once again, I'm Christopher Arsaga, and you can follow me at The Real Arsaga on Instagram and the words of our good friend, Mr. Dumbledore. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to your enemies, but a great deal more to stand up to your friends. <laughs> Is it weird that I can't take you seriously? <laughs> It's, it's, a good quote. This, and here's the thing this is the problem with bringing on a friend because it's like she she can't she sees us as a friend instead it's fine and this has been nary lemus and you can follow me at the real nary lemus on instagram just leaving you with a small reminder keep your feet on the ground always reach for the stars and never forget to stay inspired and keep laughing night everyone <laughs> night everybody thank you good night.